Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for joining us for What Matters in Innovation, the show where we tell innovators at big companies the news that they need to know from that week. I'm Caitlin Milliken from Innovation Leader, and I'm joined by Alex Slosby, CEO of DeRisk, and Michael Goldstein, founder of Switch Pitch. Michael, why don't you kick us off and let us know what you brought to the table today? Yeah, absolutely. So I've been kind of obsessed with this news story about the Mars Ingenuity drone that just flew for the first time. Now, it's the first time a uh, flight has flown on another planet controlled by uh, uh, our planet. I mean, it's it's like a historic thing. It's like puts moonshot to, you know, it, it's beyond moonshot. Uh, it, and so there's a few things that I think from an innovation perspective that are super interesting. One is this was just a proof of concept. Like there's no scientific uh, equipment on this drone. It's just to prove that it can go up, take some black and white pictures and then come back down, like just to prove that. The second thing is the, the uh, Jet Propulsion Lab in, uh, in California, they had to recreate this uh, environment so that the they could make sure that the, the drone could fly. Now, if you haven't been following the story, the Mars uh, atmosphere is has like a fraction of the amount of air and gravity that we have here. So they had to totally reconfigure how this thing works. It has two propellers that spin much faster than helicopters here. They spin in opposite directions. They're feather light and it worked. And it's the, the temperatures they had to test this in is like a minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit and no, I mean, basically no air, minimal gravity and and then the hardest thing is that they had to have an eight minute time delay between the controls that they're giving and what's actually happening in the drone. So it has to be all pre-programmed. They can't base it on feedback of what's actually happening. They can't fix anything in mid-flight. I think that's super interesting. Uh, so the significance of it is it enables future flight on other missions the way that we've now, like rovers are now like commonplace when we send out things, but drones can be like, a very common thing where we can do much different navigation of landscapes that will ultimately hopefully pave the way for humans to be able to explore other planets. So I think it's, uh, from my perspective, it's groundbreaking. It is exciting. And I think it's actually pretty inspirational. In fact, the name uh, Ingenuity came from a high school student that uh, NASA did a contest about. And she said in her submission, that ingenuity uh, is what allows people to accomplish amazing things. And so from an, from an innovation perspective, I think that that kind of captures like how inspirational it is. I mean, this is a high school student and I think kids watching that like anything is possible. Like I, it's just groundbreaking to me. I think it's time for us to rename the moonshot the marsh since that's a little bit. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, moonshot is like nothing now. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about Discord. We've all been spending so much time online, connecting with family and friends. And one of those online places is Discord. It's a virtual chat room for those who haven't been. It combines aspects of the interface of Slack where you have different channels with the webcam capabilities and screen share capabilities of Zoom. People use it to watch movies at the same time. It's really big in the gaming community. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, Microsoft and other large companies have been looking to make a deal with Discord to attempt an acquisition but sources at the journal revealed last week that the team at Discord is looking to stay independent and is considering the idea of an IPO. I think this is really interesting because we saw something similar happen with Snap a few years back where Snap didn't want to be acquired by the Facebooks and the Instagrams, which is now a part of Facebook. And basically what happened was those other social media players took aspects of Snap's interface, the disappearing stories, the ways to keep up with your friends, and integrated it into their platform. And competition for what Snap was doing increased. There was splitting and some users who were only using Snapchat snop stopped using Snapchat. And I think time will really tell for this Discord story if what we'll see is Microsoft taking aspects of Discord's platform and copying it and putting it into the systems that they already have, or if Discord is really going to be that disruptor of the online social and chatting space. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Alex, have you ever been on Discord? Uh, I haven't, but I, I think the story is really interesting because of 
the, the carrot and the stick, right? So the acquirer can say, hey, you know, hey, here, here's a bunch of money, come join us. And if that founder says no, well, then these days acquirers can say, well, okay, then we're going to crush you because we're just going to build what you do into our platform. So uh, kind of a tough choice, uh, you know, at times for founders. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Netflix today. Uh, Netflix just announced its Q1 uh, earnings and the earnings and revenue uh, both beat analyst projections. The thing that grabbed all the headlines, though, was that sub subscriber editions came in about uh, two million below expectations. And of course, that's a very highly watched number uh, in the industry, in the streaming space. Now, I mean, ar arguably, Netflix is great success in 2020, uh, set a really high bar to continue that growth. You also have vaccination, so people are spending less time on the couch. Uh, ebbs and flows with content. So Netflix has some hits and misses. And then, of course, you have all the competitors, though, right? So Disney Plus and Hulu and Apple TV and Peacock. And of course, I mean, with Amazon just announcing it's going to spend about $650 million, I think, in uh, a new Lord of the Rings series. I mean, the space is extremely competitive. I think what's interesting about it is Netflix, of course, is held up as one of the, the sort of greatest disruption success stories. Uh, and uh, Reed Hastings, the CEO, has always, I think, done a good job of living the mantra of his competitor, Jeff Bezos, around it always being day one. And, and on the earnings call, uh, Hastings talked about how uh, the company would continue to be focused on entertainment. Uh, and that's a great job to be done, you know, entertain me. I think the question becomes, you know, on-demand content, is that going to be enough to sustain growth uh, as Netflix looks to go overseas? Does it need to get into some other things? I don't know, could it be gaming, esports, you know, something else that's going to help uh, not only maintain but expand its subscriber base? So I guess the question is, you know, hey, you know, can one of the uh, sort of uh, best examples of disruption uh, keep it up and continue to operate uh, like it's always day one? We'll see where Netflix uh, has to go from here. Thanks, Alex, for sharing that news story. And thank you, Michael, for keeping us up to date. Two quick things before you log off. Innovation Leader is hosting a few conversations on Clubhouse that you won't want to miss. One is with the co-founder and chairman of Moderna. We'll also have a call dedicated to metrics and how you can level up your metric strategy. You can learn more about that at the link below. Also, our friends at Switch Pitch are hosting a really great webcast about forging an innovation strategy. It'll feature insights from innovators at Emory Healthcare and Double Lantern Informatics. You can also find that information at the link below. That's on April 30th at 12 p.m. Eastern. Thank you all so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time.